Hello and welcome to another episode of The Final Siren with Duck and Oz from the Purple Rain. Episode 4, Oz. A little bit of a tough one, mate. It's the first one that we've lost. Uh, we're not in the change rooms. We're standing here up in the media boxes, one of the random media boxes. And uh, we've got the lovely uh, Optus Stadium behind us, mate. Uh, it was the Sir Doug Nichols round. Fantastic effort by Frio Dockers and all the faithful coming out. Um, really, really impressed with a lot of things but obviously the game didn't go our way in the end Oz. no look is it the reverse juju that we're talking about here COVID not allowing us to be in the rooms therefore not allowing us to have that positive juju whether or not we're actually going to get that win but mm. look a tough summer for the boys um i thought three quarters we were right in there that third quarter in particular i thought we played exceptionally well to get back cyclone tracy absolutely sensational we're up and around it. I'm running down to the box going, here we go, boys. We're getting excited. Um, and then, of course, bang, bang, bang. The footy gods don't appear to love the Fremantle Football Club at this present point in time. Um, more injuries than you can poke a stick at. And um, we are where we are. Yeah, yeah, mate. So essentially, uh, within about the space of about two minutes or even 30 seconds, uh, the big hodor goes down with a hamstring. Yeah. Um, Norton takes the world's greatest mark. It looked like... I could not believe was that he mark. Vertical, horizontal, mate. It was unbelievable. It actually, unbelievable. looked worse slowed down, but that was that was an absolute specky. Yeah. Uh, Fifey gets does his shoulder. It looks like, or maybe he's just popped that out in a contest. And uh, Cox, he looks like he's done the bloody hamstring right off the bone. So you know, mate, he's uh, he's really struggling there. Yeah. So you know, look it, within the space of a couple of minutes, mate, we've gone from uh, chocolates to boiled lollies really quickly. And you know, good on the boys for continuing to fighting on that. That that would be a real gut blow to have yeah. your skipper, one of your inspirational backs, your big ruckman all go down in the space of 30 seconds yeah. and you're sitting there on the ground going, what's happening? Yeah. What the hell's going on? Have we got enough on the bench? Yeah. You know, what's happening? And uh, the boys, you know, they, they soldiered on and looked to, for the for the margin to end up being 28 points against the red hot Western Bulldogs. I thought that was a pretty solid effort. Yeah, look, two things, Duck. Number one, um, have you ever seen a short period of time where injuries come up and actually dictate the ending of a game. I mean, it was ridiculous. That's my first question to you. And I guess the, the second point I want to throw at you is the boys could have easily have thrown in the towel and this could have easily have turned into a six, seven, seven goal loss, but they dug deep um, and they were just able to, to get the scoreboard ticking over a little bit and, and just really hang in there. I mean, Sonny Walters kicking a goal towards the end and then the clearance is right at the end. It could have gone 50-50, but just didn't go away, which I guess was a story of the night. But I was really proud of the way that the boys just hung in there. And like I said before, really could have um, blown out in the end there. So great effort from the boys to finish it off. But yeah, just going back to that, have you ever or can you ever remember a, a situation or a game where we, injuries like that have just turn the game on its head. Yeah, well, I mean, and this is the thing, Oz, uh, as, as Freo fans, where it's it's not frustration, it's like a sadness, man, because we know we've got this 22. We've got, out of our squad of 40, we've got 22 guys who can match it on the day with any, any team in the competition. Yeah, we've had such a long period of time without seeing these 22. AP's just coming back. He's getting games into himself at Peel. And then, mate, we, we lose Coxie. You know what I mean? Like, we've got this back six that re yeah, realistically continuity. has the yeah. chance to be something great. Yeah. Like, we look at that back line that we've got on paper when you take out the injuries and you're like, set and forget. This back line's really good. You know, you've got Darcy Tucker, who's continuing to grow as well as a defender. You know, you've got Cox and Ryan, who I thought both had outstanding games yeah. until Cox got injured. Yeah. Griffin Logue was playing a great game until he's he's bonked his noggin. But I, I think that uh, the the thing is, is that, yeah, now now potentially Fifey, Hodor go out. You're looking at maybe Meek come in and he gets a bit more of a run. Now, Hodor's been on an absolute tear, Sean yeah. Darcy. He's yeah. been playing really well. He's the dominant big man out there playing a really good game, contested marks and things like that. He goes down with a bit of hamstring. So it just it does it does drain a little bit of life out here as a fan. But I think we've got the opportunity now to have a look at a couple more young fellas. Mm. You know, we've got the opportunity to have a look at Meek again, AP, get him back in the side, see how he goes. Maybe bring back a, a, a Reese Conker, that experience, leadership in the back line again. Um, maybe, maybe someone like a Valente might get a run this week. You know, he's been playing all right down at Peel or even Noddy, Nathan O'Driscoll. Yeah. All of Joel Weston, who's been on the been on the precipice for the last three or four weeks, so we've got the chance to see a lot of young guys. And the other thing that I was super impressed with today, mate, Liam Henry. Oh and, yeah. And obviously, we've talked about uh, Cyclone Tracy, the big Kahuna. Big Kahuna straightens us up. And mate, you've spoken about this a lot on the pod, but 
the thing that really impressed me today is his effort. Like, you know, you, his effort is unbelievable. He, the amount of things he does mm. that wouldn't go on a stat no. sheet. The wouldn't even be a, no, but it wouldn't even be a one percenter. Well, I call like, him one percenters. He's like banging dudes as he's <laughs> just about to, like the big holding the ball at the yeah. end of the third quarter. They oh. got the team up and about. We were riding a wave of confidence. And then, of course, he takes the big mark or he gets the free kick in the in the pocket there. Mm. If he goes back and kicks out and he misses by what? A matter of a matter of centimeters, mm. you know, but he's such a straight kick. And you know, it sounds crazy, but because of our inaccuracy, to have a guy who can kick goals accurately, it just it just gives you so much spirit. And it's like, all right, guys, here's the goal kicking routine that we're gonna do. Everyone check out the big Kahuna. <laughs> all right. And everyone just do what he does. It's like, what do you do, Kahoons? And he's like, Well, I'll just run in and kick it. Like it, it's so simple. Like he's got a really simple goal kicking yeah. technique and it works really well from yeah. anywhere around the ground. You know, so I mean, he's he's got a big reward for for his effort this this week with his three goals. You know, and he's not going to have games because he's an eighteen year old where he's going to kick three goals every game. He's going to have a game where he doesn't kick a goal. Mm. He's going to have games like today where he kicks three. Liam Henry, mate, he really really yeah. excited me. Yeah, a bit There's of X factor in that forward line. Oh yeah, and it just you know to have this young forward line that can potentially you see you see the growth there. That's the big thing. You see the growth. You know, Liam Henry, NGA. Um, you know, we've got Sir Doug Nichols around. He's he's a Christchurch ball. He's come from up in Halls Creek. He does his tied to country, the um, the ties, mate, which are fantastic. Would love to get one of those. Yeah, hint, hint, um, yep, yep. But uh, look, he's he's kicked an absolute steamer of a goal, and oh, it was yeah. it was a goal which was symbolic to me because it was kind of a passing of the 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 baton from oh, from, from Sonny, Sonny, yeah, to he because Henry and Sonny are right next to each other. Henry soccer's the ball and he's just he's off and Sonny's like just lets him go boom boom slips the tackle snaps the goal and the the crowd are up in the bout you know yep. and the, he had a couple of sniffs in that third quarter he just needs a little just it's just more experience and it's just more game time he needs another preseason because he's only he's a young fella. So what I was going to say, Duck, mm. is that the fact that really when you in the context of where he's at with his football, this is really his first run at it um, without injury and last year obviously you know he's coming back from a significant injury so he's literally gone from PSA football into the big time yeah and I think sometimes we forget that he's such a young guy but he's so electrifying when he's on the on the on the pitch we're, we're thinking oh what can he do what can he do but we need to be a little patient today we saw a, a glimpse of what to expect in the yeah. future. And the future is very bright. So very excited about um, what he can produce in the near future. But certainly today, I thought his X factor, you know, certainly around goal, keeping something alive down in the in the dead pocket there, you know, which, which allowed a goal to be kicked. I, I thought he was fantastic today. So certainly for me, bright signs for the future. Yeah. And I certainly understand that um, with the injuries, excuse me, should have had that Coke, um, you know, <laughs> with, the, you, <laughs> with the injuries in that, in that fourth quarter, I understand that there's, you know, some negativity that's around that. You know, ultimately for me, I, I like where we're going. I think there's a lot of young guys coming in. Um, don't forget that Tabs could possibly come in as well. So yep, Tabs comes know, back. Yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see how the team shapes up. Um, but out of the despair comes hope. And so, like you said before, we've got guys that can potentially step up and it has to be that mantra. It has to be the next man up. Yeah. And, you know, the next person has to take the opportunity with both hands. So... You know, these AFL opportunities don't come around too often. So for those who do have the opportunity to, to pull on the Guernsey for Freeman, I like to think they take it with both hands and, and really um, take that right step forward. So, you know, who knows? Who knows what happens next week? I believe we're playing Gold Coast. Yep, Gold Coast Another here. Another home game. But, I mean, yet to be yet to be confirmed. Is it confirmed? It is confirmed. It is confirmed. Confirmed that we will. I think uh, I think that there was a graphic that had Fremantle spelled F R E E free, free Fremantle. Um, well, Sonny was called Sonny Wilson by one oh, of the well, commentators. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know what happened there. I well, don't know if he was calling Wilson or, or he's talking about Sonny. But look, um, yeah, in the end, we've got a big sniff against uh, against Gold Coast next week. We front back up. We keep going. The twenty two that pull on the pull on the anchors, mate. They're the ones that will have to go run out there and do do the job. And and like I said at the top of the show, you know, like as a Freo fan, that the frustration does come from the fact that we know that we've got 22 blokes who and like even even out there mate we're, we're down by two points in the third quarter we go into the last quarter down by eight points you know we're red hot sniff we're at home we're rolling home and then you know just everything kind of happens at once and it just it all falls apart in the matter of 30 seconds and there's, there's nothing you can do that like in in the modern game you can't play with no one on the bench you know if you've got one rotation you know it's it's one of those things where you kind of like 
well, you know, like the boys keep slugging it out, but can we just mm. blow the siren and we'll just, you know, <laughs> like no one else gets injured? You know what I mean? Like it, it does. Throw in the towel. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it is. It's kind of like throw the towel in Rocky yeah. and, you know, poor old uh, yeah, Apollo Creed. <laughs> There's what, the one thing that probably concerns me the most is the impact when your captain goes down and, um, you know, having everyone else have to lift in terms of not only their game, but also their leadership. So obviously Fifey out, um, we don't know what the injury is, so we'll, we'll let that play out. But certainly having the captain out, someone has to step up in that leadership role and someone has to, you know, galvanize the, the boys in a short turnaround and, um, and get them up and about for the next game. So that in itself is actually going to be quite a challenge for the boys too. Um, Cause we, obviously we talk about the, the caliber of player that Fife is as mm-hmm. well. So, Leadership opportunities as well as playing yeah. opportunities. Um, that's going to be quite interesting. Could see Andy Brayshaw leading the boys out, or well, maybe oh, maybe the, the senior veteran who obviously led the team again today in yeah, possessions fantastic. in David Mundy with 30 touches. But look at the ageless wonder in Mundy. Um, rising star, Nom, you're Rising right? star, maybe. Yeah. He's been forever snubbed. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the AFL need to really look at that. But look, <laughs> Mundy, you've got Brayshaw. Uh, maybe Pierce and Conker come back in, two guys that are in the leadership group. All right, guys, we're obviously not allowed down in the change rooms because of quarantine. Um, so uh, we've got on the line now a guy played a fairly reasonable game in, and, he, and he's really been busting his ass. And he's a good TC boy, mate, which which matters more than anything because you know him, Oz. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great economic student too, business cycle. Love the work that he does. And uh, it's Trav Collier that's joining us on the line now. Hey, Trav, hey, Trav how you going? Not bad. How you going, guys? Good, good, good. Duck and Oz here, mate. Obviously a, a tough game, tough result, but certainly for the three quarters, we thought you guys were up and about. We were looking really good, and then all of a sudden, boom, bada bing, bada boom, um, injuries hit, and then it was really tough for the boys. Yeah, and I think it's it's, it's not necessarily an excuse for, for that in the end, but it, it does make it hard losing him. You know, one of your teammates, um, your Ruckman, and two key defenders against the Western Bulldogs, it's yeah, it's not ideal. Um, uh, but at the same time, we, we probably just went a little bit away from from our execution of game plan in the, from the third quarter. So frustrating, disappointed, up, sad for the guys who have got, got injured. We'll, we'll hopefully that they're not too bad. Um, but really, we've got to move on pretty quickly. Six, six days against Gold Coast before the bye. And um, no doubt we want to turn, turn the tables and, um, and get the victory. Uh, Trav Duck here, mate. Just um, wondering the conditions out there today. It seemed very slippy. seemed like uh, some boys were slipping over. Greasy conditions. Um, what were your thoughts on how, how it was out there? Yeah, I was watching a little bit of the, actual, the game last night at the dream time and, and to sort of see it a little bit slippery. Obviously, there was a little bit of a downpour um, sort of leading into the game. Um, but yeah, the surface definitely sort of had a, had a bit of water and a bit of wetness on it, which made it that little bit slippery and a little bit soft. So... Um, I think just adjusting a little bit with our, our contest and, and making sure guys start over the ball a little bit longer, I think that's what the Bulldogs were able to do. The ability with their hands to be clean and get it from inside to out um, was probably better than us. Um, but through that third quarter, we were able to sort of stay over it, drive mm. through the contest a bit better um, and get it to our runners and get it to the outside and give our forwards a bit of a better look. So um, that's probably the difference really in, in the game um, and the ability to be able to just buffer that pressure and, and they're very good, but we're going to uh, hopefully we can continue to, to show up and execute because we know what we're capable of. And I think definitely a long period in the game we showed what we can do. Yeah. Look, Trev, uh, if I was to rewind a long time ago in a place called Wen, one of the uh, the lasting memories was a T Collier running a 200 metre um, race at the old PSA Championships. And you have certainly not lost a step of pace, young man. Um, and I noticed certainly when you were able to get the ball and, and take that run on the outside, we just looked deadly um, going forward. And, and obviously that's a key part of, of the game plan. But um, is it something that you're trying to, I guess, work around in terms of trying to get the ball a little bit more on the outside and drive it forward, um, especially with your pace? Yeah, absolutely. And the way that... So Justin and um, the forward uh, coach, David Hale, who coaches me and encourages me is to be using our strength all the time. And, um, no no secret that I'm not, not the tallest bloke going around, but i got speed and that's my strength. And so to put myself in situations that falls in line with the way that we want to play to, to bring that to the table, um, I can offer it. And um, it doesn't mean that I go away from when my time's to go, go in and get it, but more opportunities that I can actually use my legs. And a few few tonight, which were 
and, and that's sort of sort of what wants to market on jail basically says if you get done holding the ball he'll cop that um, mm. because it means you're, you're having a go and having a crack and can open the game up in that sense so um, that, and that starts as sort of back in October for me when I was going into this in this year of, of what I need to do what I need to focus on and then um, even at the start of the year um, going into the pre-season and into the round one I wasn't wasn't in the team and um, was able to get in and each week it's just use what are your strengths and for me it's my leg uh, my legs and my speed which I've always had um, marking my game on that as to rather than thinking about all these things that I'm not doing it's like well hang on a minute this is me this is what I can bring this is what I can offer I'm going to work on all the other stuff and that's going to eventually get better but let's let's work on, on my strengths because I can provide it yeah one of the things that um, Switter said the last time we um, we ran the final siren was um, that he loves the idea of getting on the end of, of a pass from you. He rates your skills as being elite um, and licks his chops as soon as he sees you with the ball. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I guess you can slap him on the bum for that one. But, um, you know, with ball in hand, Trav, obviously the more that we get it to you on that, um, on that wing and driving forward, the, you know, the more opportunities we can um, we can have kicking for goal. Um, I wish the game was that simple, but obviously it's not. So can you talk to us about, um, you know, some of the areas perhaps that um, we could improve on, um, you know, based on the first three quarters, because we know the fourth quarter is a bit of an anomaly, but, you know, the first three quarters, and you mentioned, you know, going away from a few things, but um, can you just touch on a few things that perhaps we can improve on for next week? Yeah, I think um, in terms of, helping us improve and get better. The mid-forward connection piece of, of um, entering the ball inside 50 and where we're kicking it from is, is a key fa- factor, particularly when we get the ball going our way and wanting to really take advantage of it. I think there was a period, I, think, I don't know if it was towards the end of the game or um, after where we actually had more inside 50s than them and it's, it's probably where we're getting it and that execution piece. So um, the consistency of our forward group um, to to provide those leading options and get into a really good spot. I think he showed tonight what big Joshy Tracy can provide mm. and he's really building in um, to his to his game and to the season and, and big Roy Lobb did a lot of work tonight uh, on just bringing the ball to the ground and getting a contest going forward. So when we do get it going, um, it's just making sure we make the most of those opportunities. Um, the goal kick is something that we're going to work on and, and it's going to convert. Um, and it's just that consistency around the contest to, um, to get it either to buffer the pressure, like whether it's a quick kick on the boot or getting out of there, we sort of um, potentially at times might give that one more handball than what we need um, and just putting it on, on the forward group to get it going forward and saying that I think what the midfield really doing in around the centre bounce led by Sean Darcy's ability to get the ball, get the ball from to, down to the, the first receiver and then get to the outside. I think at times with Andrew Brasher's legs and him driving through Caleb Sarong and then Dave Mundy's finishing going inside 50, mm-hmm. um, it, really, for me, it's that the, the consistency of just showing up and, and, and playing. I think our defenders were fantastic tonight in terms of just creating a contest and bringing it to ground. Their composure coming out of D50 was exceptional. So we, we've we got all the pieces there, and it's just making sure on each quarter, each moment, that we're putting them in the right place. Because um, I don't feel as if there's, if there's anything that we're really lacking um, to be a real threat. Um, and I, I firmly believe that. Um, and so we're just going to go in, go into next week and during training and review and have a look what we did right and wrong and then go into the game and then got the buy. So it's just that, yeah, execution when it counts. Yep. And uh, young man Liam Henry had a uh, uh, one of his better games uh, today. He showed his, his class with the goal he kicked in the second quarter. Uh, what's your thoughts on him? Yeah, Liam, Liam's uh, improvement has been fantastic and his ability to to apply, apply himself to his role. He's obviously got all the nat- natural talent and ability. Uh, I've been working with him doing on a little bit of his, his kicking and, and uh, his contest and a few other things just to um, give him the confidence when he goes in the game that it's more simple than what it needs to be. Um, and he's working a lot on how he can improve in little areas. But he's just his application towards his role has been fantastic. And, and that's what Justin and um, David Hale as the forward coach really stresses and important um, and parts on the team because as, as I said we've got the pieces there and it's just making sure guys are doing it so his his improvement has been fantastic and I think towards the back end well, in the coming weeks and the back end of the year you're going to start to see a little bit of that flair as he gets his confidence up and starts really driving his legs through the contest because he's electric when he gets it going 
Um, so I'm I'm really confident that he's going to be able to sort of show not only well we, we know what he's capable of um, and show sort of the rest of the, the fans in the AFL what he can do. Yeah, and look, obviously, mate, tough game, but um, we have a bit of a tradition here on the um, on the final siren to ask this very question. And the first name that comes to mind, you have to tell us. Who's the weirdest okay. unit at the club? Matt, Matt Tabernard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's getting up there in volume now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, we love him. But I think it's, it's probably, uh, I actually love the weirdness of it. He's, he's a bit rare to be fella. So it'll be, but hopefully we'll get him back next week. So <laughs> nice. if he's, I don't care if he's weird, but if he's playing good, that's all, that's all that matters. Is he part of the golf club that you guys have knocking around? Not quite. I've actually have not seen Big Tab have a golf club in hand. Right. But I would, I would, I'd be quite interested to see how it would go. Look, I reckon um, he strikes me as the sort of guy that could get a golf club in a tree pretty quickly after a shank. <laughs> but uh... I reckon he's either bombing at 300 or <laughs> the club. If the ball's not going 300, I reckon the club's going 300 because <laughs> he just pulls something into the bushes. So it's one or the other. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Trey, for joining us on the final siren, mate. Um, hopefully you bounce back next week, get a big W versus the Gold Coast Suns, and then uh, enjoy a well-earned break after that, mate. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Trev. All right, well, that ends the show for, for this round, mate. We've we've broken the, the win streak, which is a little bit disappointing. We've had a bit of a tough summer. Mate, I forgot to mention Andrew Brayshaw's goal that he kicked. Oh, how elite. <laughs> oh, mate. How elite. Unbelievable. As good as the sausage rolls today. Uh, oh, sausage rolls were yeah, bloody good. good. Uh, thank you very much for Optus Stadium putting yep. those on. Uh, we'll be back next week for the Gold Coast game, so make sure you get on over here to Optus Stadium. I think it's Saturday afternoon. Saturday Arvo. Why Beautiful. not? Get around it. Be a lovely afternoon. We'll be here. You'll be here. Yeah. Everyone will be here. Dockers will be here, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Living the dream. All right, see you guys. See you later.